Right, so let's do an example here of, of working on TPAR. It's, it's a brief example, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good one. So what do we have here? We say we have a business manufactures a single product that it sells for £10 per unit. So the selling price is £10. The material costs 3 So we're very clear on what the throughput is. The throughput is 7 and um, we we're told that each unit takes two hours to assemble so that is if you like the time it takes <clears throat> um, in this example we're just focusing on the assembly process technically to be the, the bottleneck if you like um, so we have 7 divided by 2 and that's 3.5 so we have a throughput if you like per factory hour of £3.50 okay let's now see what the cost is if you like per factory hour and we are told that oh sorry well actually what am i saying we have this all calculated here um solution through per factory hour 10 minus 3 is equal to two hours right so what you now have here is the cost per factory hour you can see over here sorry the cost for the month or cost for the period i should, I should say it's fifty thousand, and you are told that it takes the, the, the labor hours are limited to limited to twenty thousand hours um if you like a month so the cost per factory hour, therefore, is £2.50. So we can see clearly that we are generating more than it's costing us. So the throughput accounting ratio is £3.50 divided by £2.50, giving us 1.4. So what you get in the, in the exam a lot of the time is, is how can you... So the key point here is how can we improve this 1.4? Well, I mean, there is a math way of looking at it, right? The issue here is if this is the throughput... If this is sales revenue minus um, direct materials per factory hour divided by operating costs per factory hour, and I'm trying to improve this 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 numerator, then it means that anything I do to improve, let me see, just change my pen color. Anything I do to improve my sales revenue is great. Anything I do to reduce my direct materials is great. Then my TPAR will go up. Anything I can do to reduce my operating costs is great. So those are my three signals. Can I increase my sales revenue? Can I reduce my direct materials? Can I reduce my operating costs? And you will have an increase in your TPAR. That's what I highlight over here. Increase the sales price for each unit sold to increase the throughput per unit. Um, reduce material costs. Reduce operating costs to reduce the total cost per factory hour. Of course, it, it, as you can imagine, if you if you improve... Um, productivity or efficiencies, if you like, in effect, um, your operating costs will fall. So, I mean, because the argument here is we're not making the raw material. Um, if I can somehow reduce my, um, these, if I can reduce these, <clears throat> if you like, improve um, my efficiencies in terms of productivity, um, this re does reducing the time, if you like, to make each um, therefore, throughput per hour would increase. So, in effect, if I can um, turn, go, take this from one hour, if I can bring this down to 45 minutes, then ultimately um, this will also increase. So, efficiencies will affect the time um, here, um, and that should that 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 should improve your TPAR. TPAR. Because you see, in effect, that would also bring down your operating costs as, as well. Right, um, and, and again, we've, we've sort of discussed this, this idea of throughput being applied. I think this is another example. Our aim is to maximize profit. Um, again, we're, we've talked about this. Just This is more a summary. Um, the key point here, identify the bottleneck constraint, calculate the throughput for each product, calculate the throughput per bottleneck, rank them, and allocate resources based on based on that. Um, we've done this already, but let's just, well, actually, I think, no, I'm going to just do this to highlight this so that you can see this, this issue of um, demand, if you like. So you can see here that you, you can be given this type of thing. I mean, this is quite nice, this one. You can easily work out the throughput. We're going to see it anyway here, working out throughput. Um, and then we, the question here is that we can... Um, let's see how what they've told us and um, manufacturer details costs and for each are um, required we're told um, sometimes you can work it out if you like you can look at the machine hours 
but you need to kind of know how much you have available. Sometimes you need to know, because you see here, you need five um, machine minutes per unit. So what you would do is you'd multiply, it depends, you just have to be really, you have to be careful. Multiply that five by that, multiply the two by that, multiply the three by that, multiply the six by that. Then you would do the same thing for labor. Per unit, you'd multiply each of these, and then you would look in the question and see what the maximum time available was. And then you would then ask the question, do I have enough to meet all that demand? If you don't have enough to meet all the demand, then you have a bottleneck in one of them, either machine time or labor time is your bottleneck. And then you would then prioritize, if you like, based on that. So machine time is a bottleneck. Um, they tell us 400 hours maximum. So um, here we are, 5,400 is your operating cost. But let's focus on the throughput first. So we've determined that the bottleneck is the machine hours. We only have 400 of them. 400 machine hours, which is 24,000 units. What do I do? I go ahead and calculate my throughput first. Once I calculate my throughput first, I then work out what my throughput is per machine time. I have that there. And that tells me nicely that I'm going to make it in this order. So make these first, then these, then these, and then this. That's that. Allocate the resources, and you can see what I've done here. I've sort of said, well, product D needed, it's, it's 1,500 units. Um, it needed, I think, six minutes. I've taken 9,000 there. And I just literally walk through. And you can see by the time I make the first three, I've used 20,500 units. I had a total of 24,000 machine minutes. I only have 3,500 minutes left. And therefore, um, I can only make use the rest to make A. And let's look at A. If you remember, A needed A needed five minutes. So if I go back here, that's why I have, if I only have 3,500 minutes, and each requires five minutes, I can only make, say, 100 units ultimately, can't I? And then I can calculate my throughput because I know what the throughput is per unit. So here we are. I've calculated all my throughput. I've got my total of my throughput, which is 5760. That's my total throughput. Then, of course, they give us the operating expense, and I can find out what my profits are. Right? So follow those steps, and you'll see that it nicely, nicely it does fit. And of course, we can then go ahead and work out what the TPAR is. I know what the throughput is per machine hour. I mean, that's my total throughput divided by the <clears throat> bottlenecked total number of hours, £14.40. I know what the cost is per machine hour as well. That's given to us 5440 divided by 400. And so that's my TPAR. It's positive. It's a good thing. Um, and that's kind of the, the thinking behind, behind throughput. Cool. Great stuff. Um, and that ends our session on throughput. Um, yeah, and I'll carry on with the rest. And I will hope to do, there was a question we did in class um, that I hope to do on video as well. Cool. Thank you.